I can do anything as fine, anything, anything as fine, anything. He's incredibly handy. He's not only intelligent, but also super good with his hands. I'm going to get out of my head. I'm going to get out of my head. I'm going to get out of my head. कोई पेन नहीं कोई कुछ नहीं मजा आया यार साहब आया हमारी नई लाइफ जितना मिल गई ना अच्छा उतना आ गया अभी की की प्रॉब्लम की सी बात हो मेरा राइट साइड में लेक्चर्स की प्रॉब्लम हां हां ये रुक भी सी जमाई और दिस सीगा बहुत बड़ा So uh, today I'll be uh, talking about uh, the endoscopic spine surgery what's it all about what are the indications, what are the complications, where to go in, and, and what to expect from uh, an endoscopic spine surgery. Who all are doing this procedure, what are the types of endoscopic spine surgery, and um, which patient they require this procedure. Well, the, uh, let, me, let me show you the spine, the structure of the spine, uh, just for the beginning. Here, here is the spine, it's a cut section, these are the nerves that are going down to the leg at each level one nerve comes out of a foramen and goes to the leg or in the case of cervical spine goes to the arm these are the vertebrae the squared ones of the vertebrae and these are the discs normal discs in between the vertebrae here you can see one of the discs has degenerated the color has changed and it has gone out and pressing on the nerve so this patient is having a lot of pain uh, radiating to the leg and numbness of the leg so this becomes a serious condition. Now this uh, protrusion, it will never go back. It has to stay here and it will keep on pressing the nerve and troubling the patient. The patient might get okay for some time and, and uh, he might uh, walk uh, in a month's time, he might be pain free, but then he'll come back again. As soon as even one millimeter more protrusion, then he'll again get the symptoms. And finally his legs gonna go numb and stop working or it might affect both the legs and it might affect the urine and the bowel control so this, this condition becomes serious now let's see here let's get it down so, so, uh, so here you can see it. it's a very big disc coming out and pressing the yellow nerve here and let's go to the level on this side the transfer section yeah so let me explain you here let me lighten the colors Yeah. This is a right nerve, this is a left nerve at this level. These are the millions of small nerves, we call them quadraquina. And now let me go down to the disc section where the protrusion is there. So it's very clear, you can see the nerve here, it's such a big nerve, the nerves here. And let's go down. So the disc has come out and it has arbitrated the right nerve. The left nerve is still visible here and go, going down more yeah so this piece of uh, disc is now extruded we call it a sequestrated disc so it has no connection with the main body of the disc behind here so this part is separate it's never going to be absorbed it's never going to go back inside it's just going to keep the troubling the patient off and on and and if it moves a little bit more then it'll completely object these nerves and then it's going to be a serious problem emergency problem Okay, now here on the coronal section again. Yeah, so that, that's the center. The main nerves are coming here. At each level, uh, right and left nerves they go out, go and form a plexus here, which goes to the leg. And you can see it's a big disc here, pressing mainly the right side of the right nerve. So endoscopic surgery yes uh it's not even new uh, procedure uh, worldwide there are very few surgeons who are expert in doing this procedure it's of two types one is the interlaminar which is relatively uh, difficult relatively a different procedure it requires proper training proper equipment and uh, it's, it's, it has a long learning curve and the second one is transframinal the transframinal is a very easy procedure it's uh, almost a blind procedure we call it inside out so it's done from the flank we go from the flank not from the center so in in case 
I have to remove this disk, it will become uh, it'll become a bit uh, difficult because we can't go to the center. So I go from the flank from here and I make a hole. It's done in local anesthesia, so it's not done in uh, general anesthesia. So the patient is relatively awake, out of sedation, but is awake. So I have to make a hole here from the skin going from the flank and reach this part. Now this part is bone. So reaching the center of the disc is relatively difficult uh, in this case. So we first go inside. Uh, if I want to show you here, my path would be like here, going into the space, first into the space, under fluoroscopy, under, under extra guidance. And uh, I reach here, I debug this. I, I can reach here. I can take this out. Then I'll remove my scope uh, slowly and come to this part and then I'll try to maneuver my uh, grasper to take this out. I might be able to take it out, might not be able to take it out. So transfer um, procedure is relatively very common. Any any surgeon, any spine surgeon can do this procedure. It's relatively a blind procedure but the only problem with it, with it is you can't move the whole disc and so, so some part of this keeps on protruding there. The patient will get better because you have debulked the uh, main disc part and the pressure of the nerve is lesser. But you can't remove the whole of this if the disc is a central disc. Well, it's a very, very good procedure if the disc is from like if the disc is here. So it's a very good procedure. You just come out here and you take the disc out and, and the patient is happy, you're happy. We've been working one hour and uh, there's, there's no incision on the center of the spine. So it's from the flank. Uh, I have done some in here, 75 grams from uh, my ratio is maybe if I do uh, say 50 uh, of the interlaminar, I will do one maybe indication wise, I will do maybe one uh, transfrontal. So it is done in local anesthesia, so you don't need a specialized anesthetist. Uh, and the patient is awake, you can tell him to move his leg. Uh, the, 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 why, why we do it in local anesthesia? Because as soon as my grasper or my probe touches a nerve here, the leg moves, the patient's leg, legs move. So I, I, I'll come to know that I'm very near the nerve, so I'll be more careful and I won't dissect it that much uh, in the transfrontal approach. Now, uh, the second uh, approach, the second approach is the like Now That's a tough procedure. You have to have specialized training for that and you have to have a pretty expensive equipment. The learning curve is very, very long. It's a slow learning curve and um, I'll explain how we go about it. So now we go from the center, either on the right side or on the left side, but I can maneuver, if I, if I reach the space, I can maneuver both sides. So I make a hole here under fluoroscopy and I dissect, uh, make a hole, small hole here, and I uh, dissect the, the other ligament covering, covering the nerves. I dissect that ligament out and I enter the space. Now that's, that's a tough part. So there are the million of nerves, the delicate nerves, and you might uh, damage the nerves. So that's why uh, very few surgeons, they can do this procedure. I have done seven years, um, 1,150 such uh, interlaminal procedures. So it's a very big number. It's probably the biggest number in India. And, and uh, so once you reach this space, you can dissect this nerve out. You can retract the nerve to this side. You can reach the whole of the disc space below the nerve. So uh, I am actually into the canal, the spinal canal. I'm into the canal and I'm, I'm visualizing everything. And I can, I can go, uh, let, me, let me show you here. I, I, can, I can go from here. I can retract the nerves, take this, take this bugger out. And I can go into the space. My camera can, the scope and the camera can go right into space. And I can go this much of this or maybe this much or whatever I want. Or whatever the loose pieces there, I can just pluck it out. So uh, the difference in conventional spine surgery and the microscopic spine surgery and the endoscopic spine surgery is in the endoscopic spine surgery, you are actually into the canal. You are below the nerve. You can see the nerves from the below. Uh, we, we call it the anterior, anterior part. So I can put my camera here. I can go up. I can go down. Whilst in, in, in a, in a micro, uh, micro dissection where you use a microscope or in conventional where you use loops uh, in your eyes for magnification, you are not into the canal. You are seeing from the top 
okay so you are seeing from 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 here the, the nose from from only the posterior part you can never see the interior part of the nerve you, it, it, it's it's virtually impossible because your vision is from uh, above and the nerves are like this so you're just watching it from here you can't watch from here and you can't go into the space and watch uh, inside or you can't go up you can't go down here so uh, that's that's the disadvantage of the conventional spine surgery and the micro uh in conventional spine surgery i would like to uh, tell more that i have to remove a lot of considerable amount of bone to reach the nerve so that becomes uh, uh distressful to the patient and the recovery period is pretty long uh, the visualization is not that much, so you must have heard sometimes that the patient is not able to walk or he's bedridden after surgery. Uh, and endoscopic surgery, well, you everything is in a vision. I can do anything in spine, anything. I, I can go to from right to left, from left to right. I can go up one level, I can go down one level, and there is only a puncture side that's not even an incision. Sometimes I don't even put a stitch. I make a patient, a patient walk within one hour as soon as anesthesia is over. It's done with special type of anesthesia. Uh, the patient is uh, anesthetized, he's, he's not awake, and, but we have a special control on the nerves. So uh, the nerve damage is virtually impossible. Uh, in this uh, case because because you are into the canal you are visualizing everything you are seeing each and every nerve of uh, their own eyes in highly magnified field so it, it is i mean uh, it's impossible to cut the nerve or damage the nerve and um, the recovery rate is very good but it depends on the patient and the problem of the patient so and i can decompress the the bone also i we have special diamond bars where I can just decompress if if, if the, the, the bone is growing inwards and it's compressing the nerve here or here or in the center, I can decompress the whole bone also. Uh, so it becomes pretty, pretty uh, good for the patient and the recovery is immediate. So I can usually tell on, on the table when I'm operating, I can tell on the table whether, whether the patient is going to be happy or not. And uh, well, in, the, in these 1150 cases, I have not had a single complication. I had no nerve damage ever, but there, there are four or five patients which uh, we, they, they, they didn't, uh, they were not happy because they said, well, uh, we are still having some bit of pain. So this is my surgery. The results are almost guaranteed, 99%. It's not like the conventional spine surgery or micro disectomy, where sometimes there's a no damage or sometimes there's a foot drop. Usually in, in, in export hands and endoscopic surgery, this is not possible. Well, my training uh, was from um, Ms. Uh, Dr. Peter Wendele. He's in Belgium. He's one of the top spine surgeons all over the world. And uh, then I got my uh, fellowship from the River Spine. River Spine is a revered. Um, group and uh, they, they, they are the group of elite surgeons so I went to Germany for Harvey's and St. Anna Hospital and there I, I got the training for um, the spine surgery, endoscopic spine surgery. I'm the only surgeon in India with the reverse spine certificate in endoscopic, endoscopic spine surgery. So that's it. Now you can see I, I'll show you a patient where I have done a revision spine surgery that means the patient was operated earlier somewhere else and he didn't go okay uh, and he had a recurrent or maybe residual disc uh, with a lot of pain severe pain i operated him and i made him walk uh, in one last time and the duration of surgery well the first cases that i i did i used to take somebody two hours three hours uh, now my my timing is somebody 20 minutes sometimes it's 15 minutes my shortest time was 12 minutes so you can't imagine uh, doing a procedure, spine procedure in 12 minutes, making the patient walk in one hour, out of the hospital, out of the hospital by the evening, and you can you can do virtually anything after a month. There is no bed rest. You you can go to the gym. You can train yourself. You can run. You can drive cars. I mean, the life is virtually normal after surgery, unlike the conventional uh, uh, surgeries, the spine surgeries. So there are very few spine uh, interlaminar uh, endoscopic spine surgeons in India, and there may be two or three of them only. And we have done, as I told you, 1150 such procedures. Thank you.